if you look at things, AI is here to stay. Don't think you can stop it. Don't think if you're afraid of a that you have a job that uh, might be taken away by AI, try to find a way of incorporating it and trying to find a way of how you can adapt to make use of that AI. My 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 biggest warning is that people need to realize that the tools that they use, whether they're actually going to reach the goals that they have. So. Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Angartica interview series. I'm your host, Kimberly, and we're really excited to have you join us today. We have with us a very special guest. We have Fritz Israel, the Chief Executive Officer at AGI Laboratory on the show. A very warm welcome, Fritz. We're so glad to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Awesome. So before we dive into this crazy interview where we have a lot of your questions that you've asked, let me tell you what the Ingatika interview series is all about. The Ingatika interview series is a powerhouse of insights from industry experts and influencers from around the world, a platform that provides the latest news on AI, automation and technologies that will help you grow your business. Come be a part of our community where we learn, share and grow together. Diving to my first question for you, Fritzis, can you tell us more about the AGI laboratories in cooperation and the next level AI that you have developed? What makes it different from the other AI systems in the market? Okay, AGI laboratory was established about 10 years ago hmm. and it's based on the idea of our primary um, inventor Mm. look for solutions that can help humanity move forward and one of mm -hmm. the things that we believe is that artificial intelligence is not something that's in the future but it's something that we live with every day already yeah. and uh, one of our positions is that we should make sure that the technology that we use is reliable and it's trustworthy and it's transparent and that's basically what uh, we are working on and what we've developed we had an online system a system online for about three years that where we which we tested and the difference between our model and and our technology and everything we see right now is the fact that our system is built on a human similar cognitive architecture so it's basically our system is trained to think like humans do and it's not trained on the massive data sets that all the other AI are, are uh, trained on. And the problem with those massive data sets is A, you don't know who owns it, you don't know what is correct. And I always compare it a little bit with trying to find the gems in a, in a mountain of sand and find little dots of gemstones and gold. And we're basically, we're training our system to learn about the topics it needs to learn, but also to verify the information so it can look up topics that it, uh, it, it that fit with the uh, with the question and then it can verify with it can get justification for using information that it's getting it can refer back to that information it is so nice to see someone like you really investing your time and energy into something like this because hey i mean finding information on the internet sometimes could be really overwhelming and you cannot really understand you know, what is correct and what is incorrect. So having uh, AI systems and having businesses to trust on uh, solutions like this really, really makes a lot of difference. Uh, you spoke about how, uh, you know, giving machines the human touch is very important. Very curious to know how you see the potential of AI to positively impact uh, society in the future. And are there any concerns or challenges that you see that need to be addressed in the development and implementation of AI. I, I just came back. The reason why I'm in Europe right now is because I went to a, a conference about the Internet of Trust with the UNESCO. And one of the main topics of that conference was about the complexity of situations that we as people deal with. And whether that's on the public sector and the private sector for big companies, the complexity of issues where we need to consider so many things that are pretty difficult for us to, to grasp. And the fact that there's so much information out there that's not really information, that's people trying to manipulate us into giving our information or into manipulating us and believing something that's not true. Uh, so for us, really, the, the technology and the development of the, the artificial intelligence is that it should become a little bit more intelligent than it currently is. Mm -hmm. And we believe very strongly that systems that we will rely on on giving us the right information need to understand that 
also that as humans we're not without faults if you look at, at bias if you're born in a, a specific area the people you're comfortable with look just look and think like you but with a world of eight billion people uh the differences it's not that some people are bad or some people are good it's that the fact that we're different makes that it's already difficult so we cannot develop systems that think like people that look like me and don't uh, consider the way you live your life on the other side of the world with the customs and the habits that you have and that you have developed and the way you think is different from the culture that you grew up in and and we believe that the possibilities are there that the technology that we've developed is able to really fit into the system providing answers that fit a specific community that fits something and that deviates from the common bias that we make a decision because we don't know if we are confronted with a conflict complex situation we always refer it back to something that we know that's not necessarily applicable that's not necessarily right but it's something which we know so we might as well try that and we believe that we need to use technology to keep us on the right track to solve the, the mysteries and the problems that we're facing that is really a fresh perspective thank you so much Fritz. Uh, my next question to you is as a business leader how do you balance the need for innovation and technological advancements with ethical considerations and social responsibility and again that this, this is a great question and again i refer to the the, the unesco conference from last week mm -hmm. Uh, there were about 4,500, 300 people at the conference and the whole topic constantly referred it back to how ethical is it that we use information that we might not own, how, use, how important is it that we have the ability to trust what we see. And I think over the last years with the development AI that too many people try to jump the gun into developing something that's not ready to be deployed, that's not trustworthy and that we're not sure that there were we, we should be able to put too many of our uh, decisions into hands of things that we're doing. And uh, systems like ChatGPT and, and the things that uh, OpenAI and that Google are developing, they're all great things. But we need to realize that those systems were not designed to be trustworthy. They, 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 they were not designed to be transparent. That's basically not what they were built on. And we believe that it is essential that uh, systems consider the ethical considerations of what is, what is right and what is wrong, and the social responsibility of being helping communities make better decisions, helping business leader make better decisions, because in the end, that's what humanity needs and that's what the world needs. If you look at system problems like climate change, it's so complex that you, you want to do something that's good for the population, but that can be bad for the community or that can be bad for the environment. So how do we balance those things? That's that's pretty impossible to do unless you're really open to look at information that is uh, collected in a way that you say, I can trust this information because then only I can make the right decisions. Yes, you have completely made a very fair point. Uh, what advice uh, do you have for individuals or organizations looking to adapt or to develop AI technology? Again, the issue is, of course, try to be... There's many tools that don't need to be extremely smart. If you want something to be re repetitive, make sure that it's doing the, the right thing the, re the correct way and that it, uh, it helps people do become more efficient. In mm -hmm. the end, one of, our, one of our visions is that we would love to see the technology to give us all uh, one day more free in the, in the week so we can do things that have our passion, that we can do things for communities. And uh, any development of technology that people can trust, that people can rely on, that it's doing the way we want it to do it, and that's not going to be harmful for your own community for any community in the world then we, we happily apl applaud any of such development and we believe that our systems can help companies like that reach that level of, of uh, reliability yes i really wanted to ask you this question earlier looking at all our conversations is could you share an example of a project or initiative that you have led that uh, exemplifies your approach to collaboration and engagement with stakeholders the, the interesting part is that my background is absolutely not technical. I come from the, the tourism management, tourism marketing world. 
So my uh, the, the biggest examples I have include the tourism and dealing with people. And tourism, of course, hospitality deals all between people and people and not systems and people. And I've in the past, I've had to uh, promote ideas or promote a change in something where not only I had to consider my own organization and the people that worked with me and my team, but also look at private sector that have their own private sector necessities, but also with the public sector. And and any change for people is difficult, but to, to try to get uh, different stakeholders in the same line and making them realize that the only way we can move forward as a company, as an organization, but even as humanity, is if we all walk in the, in the, the right direction to make sure we don't leave anything behind and that we give opportunities to to more people and that's something that in the past i have been able to do within my own small environment but it's something that i i, I it was amazing to see the moment you were able to recognize that they are go, going in that direction it's never easy and it's always going against the first instinct of people change is not for me and yes we are changing and sometimes it's going slowly we don't notice but you might as well be prepared mentally for anything that's going to change especially if you can have the confidence that the change is for the better yes definitely it is so inspiring to see how you on a personal level is weaving lives around you are there any other sound bites you'd like to leave our audience before we conclude um no i i, I think that if you look at things ai is here to stay don't think you can stop it don't think if you're afraid of a that you have a job that uh, might be taken away by AI, try to find a way of incorporating it and trying to find a way of how you can adapt to make use of that AI. My 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 biggest warning is that people need to realize that the tools that they use, whether they're actually going to reach the goals that they have. So don't try to, don't believe just what somebody tells you, but try to investigate whether the, the solution is actually going to fit what you need. Because as companies, many companies try to sell us things because they want to make the sale. And I believe that if we use applications like artificial intelligence or any type of technology, make sure that the, that you use the systems that are going to help you develop and not so much that you're going to help the company develop. And, and those things, it, the, technology is moving very fast and we need to make sure that we keep up, keep on reading, keep on investigating, but never stop asking questions. Even if you think it's true, try to find verification for it. Thank you so much. For, thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. And I, I really believe that you asked the questions that uh, that will help everybody to understand that there's no way back of where we are and and i'm here to uh, to help anybody that can find a way of making our lives a little bit better yes awesome so if you guys have any questions or anything that you need to ask let's feel free to drop them in the section below or you can reach out to fritz directly on linkedin he is available at fritz israel uh, thank you so much everyone for tuning in for more content subscribe to engati and tap the bell icon so you get access to exclusive content coming from thought leaders from around the globe thank you we'll see you in the next episode